Today I'm going to talk to you about automated, turnkey, passive short-term rentals. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. This is the place where I work with you, mano a mano, help you invest in real estate. Today I'm working with my man Vapool. Vapool, you're in SoCal. I'm in Cleveland, right? I help you invest in real estate, right? We've been running some long-term buy and hold properties for you for years, okay? Now, these are super low-cost stuff. A lot of people come here, come to Holton Wise, because we are the Section 8 kings, man. We got a lot of Section 8 rentals, a lot of low-income rentals. We are the biggest name in town in this market, right? I've sold over $200 million worth of this kind of stuff, right? And we're adding a new business line, as you're aware. That's the short-term rental business, right? I think time is right, right? People are cooped up in America. We've been cooped up for like, what, two years with all these COVID restrictions? Like, those are all being lifted. People are ready to get back out there, have fun, travel, things like that. So we want to provide them with premium places to go, right? And because of that, we're not going to be doing short-term rentals in the super low-income neighborhoods like Uvapool have been used to, right? What I got for you today, uh, it's a property in an A-grade neighborhood, but this is about the, the cheapest, the cheapest type of property you could see Holton Wise be willing to do a short-term rental on, right? We want to be in the nice neighborhoods for this business line. Long-term buy and holds, CD neighborhoods, that's our bread and butter. We love that stuff, but we don't think short-term rentals work for that business model okay likewise we also don't think a grade neighborhoods work uh for that business model right so every pot has a lid right so with all that said brother uh let's take a quick break and i'm going to get into the numbers because that's what you came here for hey steve what are you doing oh nothing just saving money on my rental property insurance oh my steve take me now Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now let's dive into these numbers, right? Because that's what you're here for. That's what this is all about, okay? 23269 Westchester Drive, North Olmstead. Bet on the market four days. We're looking at a price point, $202.85 a square foot, 185K. That's what they're asking, 185K. Personally, I think 185 is is too steep for this one, right? I believe we can do better. I think we can pick it up for 160, and then I want to spend. I want to budget roughly 15 up front, uh, upgrades, cleaning it up, and then another 25 for furnishings, right? Beds, bunk beds, TVs, right? Creating a vacation experience, right? People are coming into town they need to stay somewhere for a week or so we want to give them something nice now that's a little ranch action and we don't need to do much right like not messing with that floor right the walls they look great but here's the thing right they look great right now but you got stuff on the wall right will there be some holes will things not look as good as they do right here in this picture when you're up close and personal to it yeah i mean that's part of the game right that's why we're going to budget 15 g's okay we might need to be repainting some stuff like you know this looks great this is cool but like you know you got hole in the wall hole in the wall hole in the wall hole in the wall right like is there scratches on the floor like is the couch butted up against the wall? You know, big marks. Like, when these people actually move out, right? Like, what's it going to look like? So we, we need to, you know, put some of that in there. And then we got to give a better appliance package, right? Nobody is excited to see the stainless steel fridge next to the friggin' old white stove. Like, that's not going to work, right? Like, we got to upgrade some stuff. And then, like, these countertops, dude, I want to upgrade those, too. We could probably work with these cabinets, no problem. But we're going to have to create, like, a stone here, right? Maybe a little white subway tile backsplash, right? I do like the brick over here, though. That's pretty nice. But, you know, we got to give somebody something a little bit nicer to work with, right? But other than that, like, 
it's looking fresh. We're not going to be doing anything insane. Like, we'd probably paint this room, right? I don't know why you got the baby blue. We want to keep it neutral throughout. But everything else is looking pretty good. They got the finished basement space. I like the uh, painted black exposed uh, ceilings there. That's pretty nice. We might even use, like, the upstairs as the main gathering area and just, like, put a whole bunch of beds and stuff in the basement too, right? Uh, but you also do have the bar, so, like, maybe you have some beds over here, but, like, couches and stuff over here. Because you got to remember, man, they're not living here, okay? They're just, you know, going to be hanging out as a family, right, for a short period of time. So you can have beds randomly in places. you got to provide them, uh, you know, area that they could, you know, work and hang out, right? Kids could be running here, playing. Parents are grilling up on this deck, right? Probably want to run a gas line uh, outside to a grill, right? Things of that nature, right? That's what we're spending the money on, right? Okay? That's what you want, right? You want that nice experience for these folks so they could come, have a lot of fun, congregate, but we got to stuff this house with beds, right? The more beds we have in the property, the more guests we can handle, the higher we're going to get, right? So what I'm looking at, want to get you the discount. I want to spend about 160. I don't think the house is worth 185. About 160 is what I want, right? So 15 on reno and upgrade, another 25 on furnishings, all in 200 Gs. From there, we should be able to get about 225 a night on average. Now, that would be 6,975 a month or 83.7 a year if you had it occupied 365 days a year. But that's not how short-term rentals work, right? That's not how long-term rentals work. You're not going to have anything occupied forever, right? Historically, we're looking at a 62% occupancy rate in the short-term rental market in this county, right? So we got to factor in 38% of the time this thing is going to be empty, right? 38% of the time. Now, in the warmer months, that'll be lower. In the higher months, that'll be higher. But throughout the whole year, averaging it out, you're looking at about 38% vacancy. So after you add that in with all your other costs, fixed and variable, I anticipate you'll make about 17 grand a year off of this thing, right? So a $200,000 investment, you put up 80, okay? And what that's going to be, that's going to be 40 for your down payment. The rest will come from a lender, but you're also spending 40 up front in furnishings, upgrades, cleaning it up, making it look nice. That will result in a 14.1% cash-on-cash return, and it's incredibly low risk, right, because we're in an A-grade neighborhood. Crime rate? super low, right? We shouldn't have to worry about the property sitting empty, especially in the winter for uh, weeks at a time, right? And people breaking in, stealing the flat screen TVs, because you know we're going to be putting flat screens all over this place, right? We want people to, you know, enjoy it. Maybe you're a family, you used to live in Cleveland, you moved out of state, you're coming back for a family reunion or for this or that to see grandma and grandpa, you're going to see some Browns games, watch some Browns games, you know, things of that nature, right? We want them to be able to watch the big game, have people over, watch the big game, all kinds of things, right? Remember, it's not a house where people live long term. We're setting this up as a vacation destination. So we want it to be nice. We want to put all that nice stuff in there so we don't want to be in neighborhoods where it's all low income and you got to worry about crime, people breaking in, right? If there's friggin' 10 flat screens in this house and it's empty half the damn time, you know, a rough neighborhood, those people are going to figure that out. That's not what we want, right? So we put them in areas like this. This is about the lowest price point you guys are ever going to see from Holton Wise in regards to the short-term rental game. I still consider this to be an A-grade neighborhood, and when I say A-grade, folks, okay, uh, I'm referring to the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods. I have it linked to this video below. I have it in the Tools and Resource section of HoltonWise.com. I've graded every neighborhood in the whole Cleveland market on an A to F scale. A, low cost, or I'm sorry, A, high cost, low risk properties. F, low cost, high risk properties, right? That's the way the scale goes. I've got every neighborhood, all A's, all B's, all C's, all D's, all F's in there. Different neighborhood quality grades are going to work for different investors and different strategies, right? I made a lot of my money in the C and D grade long-term low-income stuff, right? That model works great. Section 8, long-term, buy and hold stuff, multifamily. I love that in C and D grade neighborhoods for that, right? That aspect of the business, right? If I'm looking for long-term rentals, I want to be in the C and D area. I want to utilize Section 8. I don't think the long-term stuff really makes sense in A-grade neighborhoods. But short-term rentals 
do. Likewise, I would never try to sell you a $30,000 Section 8 house as a short-term rental because I don't think that business model cuts the mustard. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.